All right, welcome to another episode of God, Yay or Nay. I'm here with Brian Burnaman. Brian, thanks for joining me, my man. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be able to, to be here talking with you. Oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm uh, excited to talk as well because you have like a big background of a lot of things I'm interested in. And uh, you're over there in New Zealand. I'll let the audience know right off the bat. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so... You started, you co-founded this movement called Conscious Action, which is a very beautiful movement. So I'll let you talk a bit about that. But uh, before we get into that, let my audience know about your background, uh, all the stuff you've done and like how you kind of came into starting this movement. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I grew up in Argentina. I'm originally from Argentina. Um, and I had a really interesting childhood and upbringing partly because my, my family is Jewish and I was living in a Catholic country, so being a little bit different. Uh, and then when I started like, being my first few years of life, my parents were starting to really get into personal development and their own spiritual journey. And basically that started to rub off on me. Um, and they were always really open with me and my siblings in terms of if we wanted to, you know, go and check those things out, go to a yoga class or a meditation session or this or that. And we were all able to decide. And I always said yes to all of that. Um, and I found that that was amazing being able to go through that because it really helped me shape into the person that I am today. Oh, so I when, when I was living there, especially as a teenager, um, I learned a lot about understanding my own being in terms of, for example, being able to be okay when my friends were doing certain things that I didn't want to partake and I didn't get the peer pressure for that. I was like, you know, like, okay, do whatever you want, I'm going to do me. Yeah. And, and as a teenager doing that, it's not that easy. Um, but I, I started getting that and that was really good. But at the same time, as I was having all of that, I was a typical teenager, like playing sports, watching TV, um, and all of those things. And one of the things that I, I really, I, I remember a lot is I was super stressed when I was a teenager, and especially when I was driving. So I don't know if, if you've ever been in Argentina, in, in Buenos Aires, uh, the traffic there, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used to get super stressed. Um, and one of the things with that was that I started, you know, developing kind of like road rage. And one day uh, after, Two or three weeks after I started practicing Tibetan yoga, which is one of my main practices, I realized when someone, I was in the car driving and someone cut me off, and I realized that instead of going to my natural reaction of anger, I just remained super calm. And I was like, wow, what's going on? And, and I didn't put that together until it happened a few more times. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. And so I, I studied and I practiced um, for the last 17 years. I practiced different meditation styles, different yoga styles. I practiced and studied Tibetan Buddhism, um, a lot of different healing modalities. And one of the, the main things as well was being able to to live in different places so one day i decided to you know this is enough living here i want to explore the world I, and i bought a one-way ticket to new york with three nights in a hotel and that was it i'm like i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> i'm just going for it so getting out of my comfort zone and i'm being able to go and that started for the last 11 years, a journey that took me from a few different places in the US to Europe, and then 
here to New Zealand, where I've been for the past six years. Um, and it's been really incredible for me being able to, to go through this for myself, an amazing journey of living in different places, especially I spent a, a few years living in a Tibetan Buddhist retreat center up in California in the middle of a mountain in a community of 27 people. So experiencing that allowed me to go really deep in my experience and to really integrate into my daily life all of the things that I was learning. But, you know, it's difficult sometimes as you're living in this life oh, um, to be able yeah. to do that. Um, and being able to, to then facilitate and be there and of service to other people, helping with healings or coaching or running classes and events. So it's, it's been incredible so far and I'm looking forward to, to what's coming, but looking back, it's been an incredible journey. That's, uh, that is amazing. Um, I, I want to actually ask about the, the retreat center, the like Tibetan center that you uh, stayed in in California. So um, I've always been interested in these kind of centers because like, so they basically try to like kind of focus your daily life on your practice and like get you just kind of deep, deep into your practice. Is that kind of what they do? Yes. Although a lot of times when I, when I talk to people, they, they picture me sitting the entire day in meditation <laughs> uh, and and that wasn't the case just because at this particular retreat center that i lived in uh, and the the lineage of tibetan buddhism that i practice it's a lot about using work as the tool or the arena for my spiritual development Okay. So that meant that, yes, we had a lot of sitting practice or a lot of yogic practices, but at the same time, we had a lot of work. So in the retreat center, you know, we are living in a community, we are 27 people. There's things that need to get done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the focus was on using that time every single day to understand ourselves to understand how can we integrate what we are doing in the meditation practice how can we integrate what we're doing when we're doing the movement practices and all of the philosophy and psychology practices from tibetan buddhism how can we integrate them into daily life so now for example i'm able to actually be here talking with you and i'm practicing instead yeah. of completely unconscious and just talking this is part of my practice a hundred percent. Cause like, I think, uh, anytime you start getting a meditation practice, you kind of get to the point where your practice is all the time. Like it, it's about being present all the time and like actually uh, being able to, yeah, just kind of understanding what your awareness is and, uh, being able to do that. So like, I'm, I'm guessing then when you're working all the time, um, and doing all these different tasks that you're kind of have to do every day. Is it pretty much trying to do that as consciously as possible and be as present as possible, kind of watch how your mind reacts to uh, tasks and all that kind of stuff? Yes, yes, definitely. There's a lot of different, you know, when, when I started, there's a lot of different things to focus on and to try to understand. But at the end of the day, yes, it is about how can I be present 24 seven, how can I be all of the time? Instead of just doing, how can I be whilst I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. And being able to understand that for me uh, was huge because a lot of times I, I've talked through the years with a lot of people that have been practicing yoga or meditation or whatever other tool they're using for themselves. Um, they use that when they are doing that, but then when they are doing work or when they are doing something else, it's kind of like, it doesn't mix. And I'm like, no, like, how can you integrate the being into the doing? It's, uh, and that's, I think the biggest part of it. I think, uh, for me, it took me maybe six, seven years before I understood that. And it was only because like, I don't know if you know Eckhart Tolle, 
but like he came out with that like power of now stuff and just like be like he made it like where he was just like hey be present all the time and that's mm-hmm. when I was just like oh you're supposed to take this out of the practice into your everyday life and mm-hmm. uh that's where like the majority of like change can happen like and it is a completely different way of living because yeah. um I, I guess like I, I noticed like with your conscious action, this movement you're kind of starting and uh, what you're doing in New Zealand. Um, one thing you talk about lo- a lot is living consciously. So when you say living consciously, I guess this is a big part of it, right? Yes, definitely. And, you know, everyone is at a different stage in their lives and in their level of awareness and consciousness. So when I'm doing my work i i'm talking to everyone and and i need to be mindful all of the time that that's the case and when when we are talking about conscious living for one person this might be being completely in the present the entire day and for another person it might be being able to take one minute to be conscious or one minute to stop so this is not um, what I try to encourage is that everybody's on their own place in life, in their own stage, and their own rhythm. Mm-hmm. And it's not about comparing with others. It's about what's the next thing for you. And, and I do put a lot of emphasis in my work in the action part, because a lot of times with a lot of the um, spiritual or, or new age teachings, they are very um, theoretical based yeah. and not, en- not enough doing. So, and, uh, you know, it's, it's people watching uh, a YouTube video or listening to Eckhart Tolle or reading the book. And it's like, well, if you don't practice that, then you're not going to be able to actually know or experience what it is to be in the present moment. And so bringing that into, into actual practice. Yeah. And I, 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 I've noticed that with a lot of the spiritual kind of movement is like, there is a part of it where it feels like they can just kind of like buy their success and spiritual, like uh, their spiritual success or anything where, where the action isn't a part of it. I think it might have to do a little bit with the capitalist mindset of just like, if I like buy something or if I just like, uh, sometimes it's almost like, the universe will do it for me something like kind of stupid like that but it's just like I don't have to put in any work and everything will kind of be given to me so I do like how you say you want to focus on the action right yeah but it's not mindless action it's an action that it's always that comes from consciousness so I always focus on anything that I'm talking about. So I, I talk about a lot of different topics that relate to well-being of our, like of the self, well-being of the collective and well-being of the earth. And in all of them, I start always with the why. Why do I care about that? How do I connect? What resonates with me? And once I understand that, it's like, okay, now what is the action? So it's not an action that someone else told me. It's not an action that is mindless. It's an action that actually comes from understanding. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, I think that's good. Like, cause yeah, if it does come from you, then that action, it's so much easier to be able to be conscious with that action as long as you're doing it, right? Yes, definitely. And and you know, it for me, this is about also meeting everywhere where they are. And, and it's perfectly okay for people that want to just consume knowledge. Mm-hmm. It's perfectly okay for those that are just doing, you know, like their um, practice for one hour and that's it. Whatever everyone is, that is okay. Like th- there's nothing wrong with that. Yet for me, it's the understanding of there is more to life. Mm-hmm. And how are you living your life? Are you choosing the life that you want to live? Or are you just going with the motions in this automatic pilot, which is what society really wants us to do, especially in the Western world. It's just like, go, 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 get more, get get more, and keep on going. And so I'm always like, where are you going? 
that's and that's an amazing question because all of a sudden when you ask that it it stops you in that like in that pattern and then all of a sudden you have to step back and go whoa like where am I going and how many times hey I've asked that myself that question too many times and been like oh shit where am I going I forgot <laughs> mm. um, yeah and, and you know like as well one of the things for me uh, I'm I have this at least for me in, in part of my mission is to be able to bring these ancient teachings and this ancient wisdom and marry it with modern science and marrying with the understanding of where people are here now. So for me, it was a huge thing when I did my postgrad in neuroscience. I wanted to understand a little bit more how I can talk from a more logical place to yeah. To people that are more science based and are not going to respond or be open to more of the spiritual or religious side of it. And for me, I, I try as much as possible to, to make everything accessible to everyone, to not allow any labels or not to allow any, anything to be in the way of people understanding themselves and growing and how to connect to everyone else because this is one of the biggest things for me is being able to understand that the best thing that i can do is to be myself mm -hmm. to not compare myself to anybody else to be able to live my life as me to understand that i matter to understand that there's a place for me and that i'm bringing gifts into the world that no one else has. Yet, I am not more important than anybody else. I am special, yes, yet at the same time, I'm not more special than you or, or anybody else listening. Mm -hmm. And by me doing that, by me being my, just myself, I am actually enabling the collective to reach its potential. Because I am part of the collective but also I'm an individual and yeah. how to balance that is an amazing practice. It's like, uh, yeah, try to balance the self empowerment with, uh, some humility pretty much kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Well, it's for me, the way that I see this is that I, I, I believe in the, that we are all one. I mm. believe that you, me and anybody else in the world, we are all one yet at the same time, we're individual. So for me, it's really important to understand what is my place? How can I enable the, the growth or, or how to help to raise the consciousness of everyone and understand that we're living at different levels. Mm -hmm. you know, we are living that level of consciousness, yet at the same time, we're living on this level of the three-dimensional world where I am and part of my mission is to help people to understand what we're doing to the earth, how our individual actions and collective actions are actually impacting and the footprint that that has in the world, the footprint that that has and the impact that it has on our relationships and how there's people in the world that, you know, are suffering and going hungry and are dying every single day just because of lack of the distribution or because of social injustice. So being able to understand all of these different perspectives that I need to see myself and my actions in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, I guess that's kind of part of like what the conscious action is. Um, like your movement is kind of being able to understand like all your actions how, and how it impacts like the world and pretty much any kind of different area because I know you talk about environment a lot and on your website and stuff um yeah. how, how did you uh is that like uh so what made you kind of like start this like whole movement and like how did it kind of start to like bubble up and get to where it's at right now yeah so uh when I came to New Zealand I I didn't know I came with a one year in like visa and I thought you know I'll just check and see if I want to stay here or if I like it or not if I can um, make a living here and it's basically 
every time that I move to a new place is, you know, starting over. Exactly. And you start, you start meeting people, you start noticing the culture. And I, I was able after a few months to start working in a place that actually sponsored me to, to stay here in the country. Um, and through there, uh, I was working with an amazing team. Um, and one of the um, other managers there uh, is a really good friend, Kayla. And when the place unfortunately closed down because of um, an investment uh, issue, then we were like, okay, what do we do now? And, and I was just waiting because my visa was tied with that. I was waiting for that to be resolved and Kayla and her partner went traveling. And then one day I got my visa. She returned from traveling. We got together just to catch up. We're like, you know, we should do something together because we had all of these ideas for that workplace that we were um, at together. And, and we were like, okay, let's like, let's start thinking about that. And that night it happened that we both went to the same event. We didn't know <laughs> that we were going there. And it was a screening of a documentary that it's called Plastic Ocean, which I recommend everyone to watch it if you haven't yet. Okay. And, and it shows really, you know, the impact of the plastics in the ocean, uh, which is a huge problem that we have in the world and one of the things that at the when we left and we were talking was that you know there were around 50 70 people in that space everyone that cared or at least at some level about this issue yet a lot of people left that evening with um, a sense of anxiety or negativity around this huge issue and not knowing what they could do so we both thought you know this this is something that needs to change like we can do more we can create gatherings and events and get people together to come and raise awareness of that but then focusing on mindfulness focusing on understanding where we are and what can we do and not just going home like i'm feeling like really negative so we got together the next day and we just wrote in a piece of paper why and we started putting all of these different words there and and we started okay we care about all of these things okay what what is catching our attention the word consciousness and the word action were the two biggest things so we're like okay like we are conscious action and literally in three hours, we grabbed everything that we were writing on that piece of paper that said why. We created the website, we created the brand, we created the first two events. We reached out to a few people that we know for being guest speakers and the moment just started. And it, I think that it was the right time, the right people. Um, and now it's been going for the last three and a half years um and it's been changing and morphing and it's its own entity and yeah. and it's been amazing because it it is a thing that it's bigger than just me and and it enables a place of connection for people a place of collaboration um and as well a place to celebrate because a lot of times we, we forget to celebrate life and we mm. forget to celebrate the small things. And when everything is just, you know, it's just going and going and going and there's always more. So being able to take a moment to celebrate what's happening, whether that is in a personal space or businesses that are doing amazing stuff or whenever, like, you know, there's something that someone is doing right and the main thing for conscious action besides connection is that everything comes from a place of compassion and that is key to understand that you know we're all in a different place in a different stage of life and being able to do that so i don't know more than you i don't know more than anybody else i know what i know mm -hmm. and i share that and i share that 
without judging anyone and without trying to you know tell you or tell anyone what to do i'm just sharing and inviting everyone to see if that resonates and if that resonates perhaps taking on board mm -hmm. I, I man i love that and uh, i do like how you're saying like it's not just about bringing people in and like being like look what's wrong with the world and sending them back like all depressed which uh i know like sometimes it can kind of feel like that with uh, those kind of things but uh you come in and it's like a celebration it's community um I, I think i've talked about community on this podcast so much just because like it's just something that i feel that's in modern life is just not there anymore unfortunately mm -hmm. and uh you're saying like actually do some actions that are good like i know like i uh, I've seen you like you have your own gardens and stuff you're growing your own food so you're like trying to like actually make an impact on food and stuff like is there any other things that you're you're doing that it's like actually making a positive impact in that kind of way yeah so you know of course my biggest focus for me has always been myself my mind my body practicing every single day um my my what I do for practices but as well on um earthly level as you say like being able to to grow um food as much as possible buying local so i buy from the farmer's market the local farmer's market as much as possible i buy organic um i don't buy anything that comes in single-use plastic so anything that is with packaging unless it's compostable um I don't buy it. So oh. I actually, I have, and this is just because uh, I, at the beginning I was trialing it and then people were inspired by it. So I have like a little like glass jar full with all of the rubbish that I've created individually. Mm -hmm. and, and I have still one, like, I think that it's like a, 400 grams peanut butter like, glass jar full of my rubbish from the last two and a half years. I still haven't fully like, um, filled that's it. That's their rubbish for the last two and two a half years. Wow. So that's what I've created individually. Um, I, I try as much to not have an, uh, an, a negative like, footprint from that side. Okay. Um, I I'm vegan as well, so I eat a, like a whole food um, plant-based um, diet. So I try to make sure that um, I don't create more than necessary suffering for animals. That I don't um, create any of the emissions that the biggest producer in the world, that is animal agriculture, is creating i'm not taking part on that mm -hmm. i don't own a car i walk everywhere and if i do need to go somewhere i uber um so i try as much to use shared things and not creating a, um, something more of a footprint with that and and i do a lot of other small things um but for a lot of people i think that you know that seems to be a lot yet for me it's easy <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's simple and one of the things you know I, I share a lot of this when i'm running the events and the workshops is that not everybody needs to focus on everything and it's starting with something yet at the same time it is trying to to bring our awareness a little bit bigger and trying to see more than just one thing um, and being able to to understand that it's actually easier to do all of those things when we slow down. So I live in for modern society, I would say, quite a slow life. You know, I wake up, I do my practice, I make my breakfast, I prep my lunch, I walk to the office, I I do all of these things that enables me to actually have this lifetime so i cook all of my meals like i think that i eat out or like I, like i usually don't have takeaways but i usually eat out 
once, twice a month. And the rest of the time, I cook my own meal. Every weekend, I go to a farmer's market. So I know that I'm going to get all of my fruits and veggies from there. Um, I go to the organic shop whenever I need other things. I buy in bulk from the refillery, taking my own glass jars and filling them up. So it's easy to do all of that. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot yet. Most people are so busy going from here to there and doing all of these different things that then they don't have time. So then they need to start spending more money and getting into more of what I, I call the convenient things. So for me, it's, you know, the life that I live now, it's easy to go to a farmer's market instead of the supermarket mm -hmm. because I make the priority. Yeah, that's true. So it's not, it, it's not harder if you have, you know, not everywhere in the world there's access to farmer's markets. Um, but here, for example, in New Zealand, that we have a lot of the farmer's markets, it's the same amount of time to go to a farmer's market than to go to a supermarket. So that's just a matter of a choice. And yes, the farmer's market is only during the weekend, but I, because I make it a priority, I plan it for my week. Yeah. And uh, like, I, I love how you're saying that because it's just about making that choice and making that priority because uh, a lot of times, like uh, you can, a lot of times these decisions aren't as hard as people make them out to be. But like when your life is so fast, you, you go for convenience, like you said, and you're not thinking about any of those other, like what your actions actually contribute to. But when you, sl yeah. you can slow down and make those decisions in the future and say like, Hey, I'm going to, grab this from there and this from there and then it just kind of comes part of your life and it becomes a lot easier right yeah and also you know part of this is um understanding yourself what you stand for what you care about what are your values and seeing i i, I all the time and i run a lot of workshops on this is understanding making actually this exercise of grabbing a piece of paper and writing what you care about, what are your values, and then starting to see if your actions are actually aligned with that. Because I believe that everybody is a kind, loving human being. Everyone. <laughs> we are just so conditioned to do things a certain way, and we haven't realized how misaligned that is from what we actually believe. Mm -hmm. So if everybody really understood, and this is as well why I try to raise awareness and to educate, if everybody, for example, really understood the impact of single-use plastics, perhaps it wouldn't be as much of a challenge to switch from, uh, if you drink coffee, for example, to use the single-use takeaway cups, to taking your own reusable cup it's not a big deal. Yes, you need to remember to take it. The same with like, you know, your reusable bags or anything. It, you need to remember to take it, but it's an easy decision and an easy choice and an easy change to make when you understand why you're doing it. And I do believe that we all care about the environment. We all care about each other. We all care about ourselves. So it's, it's slowly making this bigger and becoming more and more aware and raising our consciousness so that we can do the actions here on this planet better for everyone. Hell yeah. Hey man, can't complain about that. <laughs> that that's uh, honestly, that's very true. And I do love that. And I do love how you're saying like, tell, ask people to like sit down and like think about what your values are. Because uh, that is a good like kind of just exercise to just kind of understand what you care about and like what do you believe in and see if your actions actually match that because like uh, that is a big thing like uh, most of us like when we actually sit down and look at our actions and like what we believe in we'll see those like differences and be like ooh, like I can change that and you'll 
over time realize how easy those changes are. It's not, uh, it's not too hard uh, if you actually sit down and want to make those changes, but we just get addicted to the, that convenience, like you said. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, and, I, I oh, sorry, know, go ahead. Sorry, no, one thing before, um, like uh, that I wanted to make sure to also say is that this is not about judging ourselves either. This is not about feeling bad if my actions are not aligned with things mm -hmm. because sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's not convenient. Sometimes my life now doesn't enable me to do those things. So it's about also having that compassion for ourselves. So as I talked before about compassion, compassion is not only for others, it's compassion for ourselves. So when, if someone is doing this exercise of sitting down and seeing what their values are and seeing if their actions match their values, it's not about feeling bad if they are not. It's not feeling bad about if and you're not able to change them now. But it's about seeing how this enables you to keep on growing and to live the life that is aligned with what you actually believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's actually a great uh, transition because uh, you were talking about giving compassion to yourself. And uh, one thing I do remember you uh, talking about a lot was like mental health. And uh, you help people with like, just like, yeah, you help people with mental health. And I know like with like a lot of your teachings that you learned from like Buddhism and like all these practices that you've done, can you like maybe give my audience a little idea of like how you help people with uh, mental health? Yes, definitely. So, you know, one of the things that, um, that, I, that I talk about is well-being and well-being is you know, there's so many different aspects. One of them, it's the mind, the mental well-being or mental health. And that is something that we all have. There are some of us that we are out of alignment. Therefore, we have some mental health issues. Um, and this is not to say anything. That's not a negative thing. That's just the reality of where we are. And, you know, if I am stressed, if I have anxiety, if I'm depressed, I have some mental health issues or challenges. What are the things that I can do to address that? So when I'm working with people, um, and it's been amazing, I've been working a lot uh, here in New Zealand at university and with different um, businesses as well with individuals. Everyone is similar in a sense, but as well, everyone is different. So it's finding the easy ways to get everyone to be able to look at themselves and where they are. And, and I always try to, to start with the most basic things. That is understanding that there is more to ourselves than just our mind. And a lot of us are disconnected from our body. I know that I used to be disconnected from my body in the sense that I wasn't connected to the world of my feelings. Mm -hmm. I was only, you know, I, I thought and I thought and I was very heavy. I didn't really connect with my feelings in a deep manner. Um, and I try to get people to, to bring back their awareness into their body and I do that by bringing movement, by bringing connection to the breath, and by reconnecting ourselves with our feelings. And it's easier when we're able to slow down because feelings are in a different speed than thoughts. Thoughts go fast. Mm -hmm. Feelings, it takes a little bit more time. So I need to actually sometimes slow down, take a deep breath and go in and trying to understand, okay, there's a feeling here in my chest or there's a feeling in my, in my belly. And the biggest thing that I tell everyone is try not to think about what that means. Try not to label it. It's not positive, it's not negative, it's not even an emotion. It's just a feeling that you're having. So if you're having a feeling in your belly, where in your belly is that feeling? And can you stay with that feeling? Because the reality is that, and this, you can take it both from a pure 
quantum physics perspective or from um, a spiritual perspective, everything is energy. And when I understand that everything is energy, what I understand is when I'm having a feeling is that I am experiencing energy. So I'm experiencing energy and energy moves and changes. That's the law of energy. Mm -hmm. It changes all of the time. It doesn't stay the same, which means that if I'm having a feeling and it's really intense in my belly or in my chest, that's not going to stay there forever. Yet, if I don't pay attention to it, if I don't allow it, then what I'm doing is that I'm not allowing myself to process my experience. Therefore, I'm creating some blockages. And when I'm creating blockages, I'm carrying that with me in my entire life. And then I'm not able to actually process what happened. And I start to get too much into the stories and into the reactions and, and we get into our heads. So I always try to start, especially when I'm working with big groups, easy things, sitting down, closing the eyes, taking a few deep breaths. Just even if that's all that you do during the day, if you are not doing that yet, that is going to help. If I bring some movement, especially a lot of times I talk with a lot of people around stress, shoulders and neck, super important because most of us, we hold most of our tightness here. Mm -hmm. So if you're really stressed, usually a lot of people <laughs> have the shoulders really up. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's me right there you're describing <laughs> that's a sign of that so one of the things that i tell people is bring every single day you know moving the shoulders making some circles multiple times per day and when people do this sometimes i i, I usually do this when i'm doing some workshops i get everyone to do a couple of this and when people stop i just ask everyone to stop and I see what people do. Everybody that has a lot of stress, if they have been doing the circles or the movement of the shoulders for more than 30 seconds, usually a lot of people will end up doing this movement of the neck or the head because they cannot stand the feeling of the pressure that is in their neck. Because now when I'm actually moving the shoulders, I'm allowing a little bit of that stress energy to start to move a little bit. And that's going to start actually showcasing all of the tightness on the neck. So then I get everyone, instead of actually escaping the feeling by doing those quick movements, to take the time and do some really, really small or big, but really slow movement with the head. Mm. So when I start to do that, after having moved the shoulders, when I really slow it down, I can start noticing where there's some tightness. And then I can start to marry my breath, slowing the breath down with that. And this is, you know, like, you don't need to believe anything in particular any you know you can believe whatever you believe in terms of religion or culture or whatever you can move your shoulders and your head mm -hmm. you can use your breath this is one of the biggest things that that i share with people to be able to get everyone to slow down and to be more connected with their bodies mm -hmm. this for me it's you know the beginning and then with everyone everyone is in a different place and different mm, needs so there's some people that need more physical practices, some people that need more mind practices. So that is then on a more of an individual level. What is your need? What is you know, each, each person's needs to understand how can we deal with our mind? Because the reality is that and you mentioned before the power of Naya, the now and Eckhart Tolle. This is one of the reasons why most people have a lot of the mental health issues is because we are not in the present. So if I am not in the present, I start to live in the past, in the future, in the hypothetical scenarios, 
which are not real. Mm -hmm. The past is already gone. The future hasn't happened. And all of these hypothetical scenarios are not there. The only thing that really exists is now. And when I'm more in my body, I am living now. When I'm more in my mind in those scenarios, I start to get stressed and I start to potentially get anxiety and then get depressed and suicidal. Um, and it's incredible the numbers that we're seeing, how it's rising, the amount of suicides um, that is happening in the world, especially for teenagers and, and young people. And this is partly because we are not teaching and we are not sharing these tools that enable everyone to become more understanding of themselves, more resilient with what's happening in their world. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is that the world is chaotic. Mm -hmm. So the natural response to a chaotic world and environment is chaos inside. So it's not wrong that people are having all of these symptoms or issues because that's a natural response. As well, there's a lot of people that are not connected and haven't found their people, their tribe. So then they feel disconnected. They feel like they don't matter. So the lack of connection and the lack of understanding of themselves doesn't enable everyone to understand how can I be in relationship with what's going on, which is challenging. You know, we have climate change, we have now a pandemic, we have all of these different issues with um, money and governments and different cultures and everything. There's a lot of separation and depending on where you're living, this is more heightened or less. But, you know, there's a lot going on. And for me to be balanced, I need to remove myself for a moment from all of that be with myself, with my body, do some practices, connect. And from there, then I can bring more balance into my daily life because I'm still having to deal with all of that. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Uh, I really love how you explain that uh, really perfectly. And it's true, like, uh, like how when you start focusing on your body, and this is this is something I, like you said, uh, you took a while to kind of learn how to like uh, become aware of your body. It was the same with me. And I think it's a lot of people who live like, uh, who have like a kind of an analytical mind. I, I presume you have that as well a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so like, uh, yeah, this is something that I noticed with a lot of men and like even women who have like analytical minds, we don't go into our body that often. And uh, yeah. that's when I started learning that. And yoga was a big thing for me. And uh, doing breathing exercises was a huge thing for me to really look at your body. And then you notice those sensations and uh, how you said it to be able to just look at it like energy, like, hey, like this feeling that's coming up with it is anxiety or it's stress or depression. Like you'll notice that that, that, that actually has feelings in different parts of your bodies in a different part of your body and like you can actually just observe it and if you actually give it that kind of observe it like energy that it can actually change um it is uh yeah it, it gives you a lot of uh, a bigger tool to be able to deal with that which is exactly what you said we should teach people this tool to understand your body um can you like because i know a lot of people uh or even like in psychotherapy now, like they're actually kind of seeing like these feelings that kind of pop up. Like, do you kind of see that like when these feelings of anxiety or depression, they pop up, do you kind of see that as like a signal from like almost yourself, like to yourself almost? Like it's like mostly a, a signal almost? Yes, the, the thing is that in a sense, our, our body is always signaling us. And I, and I also believe that the universe or consciousness or whatever you want to call it, even if it's God, there's always signs. So everything is a sign for us that comes either from within or from without. And it's just, are we aware of those signs and what are we doing about them? So yes, that is like, there's always our bodies giving us all of these signs, yet we have normalized a lot of them which means that then we're not going to do anything about them. 
So people live with chronic stress because they have normalized that, that that level of being, you know, like fully wired and like and not being able to sleep and not eating well and not going to the bathroom well and you know all of these things they have been normalized, mm-hmm. but they are not normal. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not if I am not aware. I'm going beyond what my culture, my family, or my environment is understanding as normal, I might not catch those signals that my body is sending me. And then it starts, the longer that we leave these things building up and building up and building up and building up, it's harder to work with them. Yet, at the same time, for me, and this is one of the keys of everything, is that we are all powerful we all have the tools and the inner resources to deal with everything we just need to remember them we need to unearth them and actually understand that we all have a choice all of the time and it doesn't matter how i lived in the past each and single each and every single moment it's a new moment that i have a choice to decide how i want to live Mm -hmm. and for me this is huge because it gives me the power it's not anybody else's it's not um you know like a a leader or a guru or it's not my psychologist or even my coach or my mentor yes i listen to them but i am the one that is in power Mm -hmm. so i am the one that has that capability to create the change and, and this is something for me that is super important because a lot of times we are waiting for someone else, you know, to, to do things for us or to actually create the change for us. And we are the ones that have the power to do that. And everyone is the one that has the power to do that. And we, we've been conditioned and educated in a way that it's always kind of like, you know, the government or the corporation or whoever it's going to, you know, make things right and create a change and it's like well like i can create a change now Mm -hmm. Um, and i can do that both from my consciousness energetic level or on a physical plane with all of my actions that i'm doing as i was sharing before that i'm doing for the environment all of that helps and i can focus on one or the other or i can focus on none of them but it's up to me to decide you know this is how i want to do it yeah and I love how you said that we have been conditioned. Like, I, I think it is like just from like kind of commercialism in a sense that like we've been conditioned that we can buy change, like some product's going to give me change or some service is going to give me change. And like, uh, it's kind of sad sometimes seeing like even the spiritual uh, like uh, community sometimes get that kind of mindset too. It's like, no, you need this to get that change where it's like, no, you need to like, you need something to actually give you your own empowerment and like you empower yourself by taking action and then you create that change right yeah and you know and at the same time there's nothing wrong with mm, going and learning and you know going on retreats or going to workshops or doing online courses because sometimes we need to hear something from a specific person in a specific way with the person that we resonate for that to actually be like, ah, Mm -hmm. now I understand it. I've heard this, you know, once, twice, 100 times, but up until this moment, it didn't make sense. And now I'm either ready or that person said in a way that makes sense. And, you know, there is, this is why everything is in balance. Mm -hmm. I need to, you know, to understand what is just me and where I actually need to be connected and where do I actually need to go and listen to others, yet not giving my power away. Mm -hmm. It's that balance of saying, you know, I'm going to hear you. Like I follow the Tibetan Lama that I've been following and that I lived in the retreat center. I, I follow a lot of people like Chopra or um, Eckhart Tolle, or I, I follow Neil Donald Walsh. There's a lot of people that I listen to, that I follow, yet at the end of the day, 
it's up to me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, even like how you are saying, because I, you have said many times in this podcast, like we're all at different levels and you have to understand that. And you've talked also about self-compassion. And I, I've noticed like with mental health, like a big part of it is self-compassion and just kind of understanding where you are. Um, because like we all make mistakes and like we all skip some of the actions that we wanted to do, whether it's meditation or yoga or whatever it is, like we all make those mistakes. So like um, I remember in my like uh, like in a lot of my kind of transformation, a lot of it was like learning to be self-compassionate because when you do make those st mistakes, you can't beat yourself up about it and go like, oh, you idiot, because then that just like it just kind of goes down and you just end up making more mistakes after that right so like having that self-compassion um I, I found really important like is that kind of how you teach it as well yeah and you know a lot of it as well and this comes from a, a mind perspective as well as an energetic perspective is how we frame things so for example you just mentioned the word mistake um i could reframe whatever i'm doing as learnings and as experiences instead of mistakes and if i do that my relationship with my experience start to change oh that's amazing if, if if i see that this was a mistake then i have a negative connotation yes there could potentially be a learning from a mistake yet i could bypass that and just think that was an experience what can i learn from that experience did it achieve what i wanted to achieve or did it um, feel like I wanted to feel yes now I'm, I'm you know analyzing that but not really if, if I see that as a mistake then I have a negative relationship with myself so there are things that it is how I relate to life as well as am I going on the autopilot or am I being conscious of what's happening am I actually responding to life or am I just reacting? The reaction is the autopilot. The responding to life is the conscious action. If I choose every single moment based on my experience, based on my feelings, how I want to show up in the world, that is not reaction. That doesn't mean that I'm always going to be nice and, you know, like, I can actually be energetic and be a little bit like tough, but I'm only doing that if the, if the circumstance is calling for it. You know, if, if there is that someone that is in a space that I'm in and they are um, being abusive, then I need to step up. I can't be like, hey, like this is all love and peace. No, I actually need to go and actively stop that. And then we can have a conversation about that. But in the moment, that moment calls for swift action. So this, this is a lot of times about understanding the difference of reaction and response, as well as understanding, you know, how am I framing things in my life? Mm -hmm. Am I coming from a place of fear, of lacking? Or am I going from a place of openness and curiosity? Hell yeah. No, I love that, man. And uh, yeah, the reframing thing is, uh, it's amazing. Uh, like I've noticed a lot of people have been talking about that on my podcast too. And like, it's like, uh, it is a powerful tool. And uh, yeah, I need to be using it myself a little more. All right, I got to ask you the question of the podcast, though. So, uh, Brian Burnaman, God, yay or nay? I, I think it's a, it's a layered answer. <laughs> yeah, no, most people give me a layered answer. <laughs> uh, I, I don't connect and I never connected even growing up um, with the... Um, idea of this bearded guy in the sky <laughs> yet i do connect with the idea that there's an organized dynamic principle that some people call it god some people call it universe some people call it the quantum realm however we want to call it 
I believe that there's something bigger and that something bigger is something that makes me be part of everyone. And whether I'm using the word God or whether I'm using the word universe or whether I'm using the word quantum field, I believe that that is there and I am it and you are it and everyone is it. And I don't believe that I am less than. So it's not that there is something that it's bigger, which means that then I am less than that. I am it and you are it. I'm not less than anything and I am not more than anything. We are just are. Mm. And I think that I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave it there because it's, this is a very interesting conversation, like an, an amazing question because it can take everyone. It's, if we start questioning what we believe, we can get to that place of thinking like, oh, okay. So if, the, then why? But yeah, that, that I would say, you know, that, that is my answer. Awesome. Hey, nothing wrong with that answer. <laughs> uh, all right, Brian, uh, let people know where they can uh, get a hold of you. Um, anything you want to promote. I know you have a podcast and uh, tell them anything you uh, want them to hear. Awesome. Yeah. So conscious action, uh, just find us on Facebook or Instagram or the conscious action podcast, um, as well as I'm coming up now with more online offerings as well. So we're going to start promoting um, or launching soon some online courses that it's all around conscious living and how to live with less stress, um, how to live with less of a footprint. Um, so that's all in the making now. And potentially when you're hearing this, it's already going to be there. So just go to consciousaction.co.nz and you will be able to find it there. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you for having me and thank you everyone that has been listening. And if you learned something, I, I hope that you're able to comment what resonated with you and what is the one action that you're going to take.